Happy, happy Friday, everyone. I'm so excited my live feature is working. At least it is on my regular Facebook page today. So um, since I can get it to work, I am going to share a few things on the topic of anger today. I hope you guys are all having a really good week. We're now into the weekend, yay. And even if you're working um, over the weekend, you know, I hope you guys have a really fun and safe adventure over the next couple days. So um, I wanted to share a little bit about anger because anger is more than just, I think a lot of times we think anger as being someone cursing someone out or you know, getting in a really big fight with someone, and that is true, right? There is anger that we experience in the moment, right? Road rage, <laughs> different things happen. We get frustrated or impatient, right? And then we become angry. But anger is actually sometimes something that is actually really hidden. We may not even know we are angry or recognize it, um, or, we may be in a relationship with someone and that doesn't necessarily mean a romantic relationship. It could be. It could also be a parent-child relationship or uh, just a regular platonic friendship or a coworker type situation, whatever that happens to be. Sometimes anger is very subtle. And so that's actually what I want to talk about. I wanna share a couple things that are red flags about anger that maybe um, are not as obvious. And so that way you can check yourself and, and be more aware of yourself and where you are or are not, as well as like other people in your life that you meet. So uh, here are some red flags. The first one is, hello, I see someone joins. Don't know who you are, but thank you. So the first thing that can be a red flag of someone angry is jokes, telling jokes, particularly when these jokes are about other people. Now, the person telling the joke will, you know, make it sound really fun. <clears throat> it's kind of like a subtle, uh, subtle thing and, you know, Everyone's laughing and in fact, the person who is being made fun of may feel like they are wrong for even feeling upset or hurt by this joke because it's really kind of like portrayed as something like ha ha ha. But actually this person is making fun of you or it may be you're the one who makes jokes on other people um, in subtle ways. And it's not, you know, these jokes are kind of embarrassing um, this other person, right? And um, it, you know, you could try to be pawning it off as like, oh, you know, can't you take a joke? But it actually is an underlying sign of anger. And these are things that like maybe, you know, you've been angry about since you were five years old and you've stuffed and shoved and everything and you're not even recognizing that this joke and telling jokes about other people is really like, the coping way that you or someone else have come up with for dealing with the anger. A second sign or red flag is cynical. People who are just like, eh, I don't believe it. They kind of are negative about anything. If there's something that comes up that's a problem, any other ideas or solutions, it's always like very negative. They're never on board with anything. Everything is you know, just overall um, putting it down and shutting the ideas down. Another sign is depression. Um, you know, depression actually can be a red flag that someone um, that you know or you yourself are actually really very deeply, deeply angry about something. And usually these are things that have happened um, years ago, or it could have even happened like a year ago, but you've just been pushing it aside and you either because you don't want to deal with it or you're embarrassed about it for whatever reason. 
Um, you were made feel maybe you or the other person were maybe made to feel guilty for even feeling angry at the time. And there is nothing wrong with being angry. Let's, let's get that straight right away. Anger is an emotion like any other emotion. It's okay to feel angry. Um, that's like human nature and there's nothing wrong with anger. It's like what, when it's not dealt with and it kind of becomes part of us and we let it or someone else lets it you know, just kind of stay with them and it's not released and dealt with, then, then that's when it becomes a problem. So depression is another sign. Another sign of anger could be eating disorders. Um, in this case, usually the person is very angry about their body. Um, you know, they're maybe angry about society and the expectations or maybe, um, you know, when they were younger their mother or their aunt or someone you know teased them that their butt was a little too round or whatever <laughs> craziness it was um you could even put in like dieting like dieting excessively um it's not exactly an eating disorder but you know there's like that deep unhappiness and anger about um your body or that someone has about their body and it can develop into an eating disorder so it can actually be a sign of you know unresolved anger issues also abusing sex either forcing sex on someone or withholding sex or you know it is consensual sex but there's like no love or care or anything involved with it it's just you know all about you meeting and uh, a need that you have or someone else meeting a need and demanding a need that they have without really any interest or concern for hello <laughs> thanks for joining any interest or concern for you know the other the other partner another sign of anger is sloppiness so this could be sloppiness in anything um it could be sloppiness at work it could be sloppiness in the your dress or the way the person is dressed um it could be just sloppiness with like daily habits like um, just like everything is just whatever. I don't, you know, I don't really care. Um, but everything is just sloppy and, um, the best effort is not put forward. Um, so that lack of desire to show up as your best self or this person to show up as their best self is also a sign of anger. You know, that person has kind of given up. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Bernadette. How are you doing? Um, Good to see you. I miss you. We should meet up sometime. Um, so yes, so sloppiness can, um, Bernadette, you know, you are in fitness, right? You, you are definitely not sloppy. You are like going and going and going and motivating people. Um, but I don't know if like that has been your experience or not, but like people who maybe don't care about their fitness or their physical health and they're just like sloppy, um, has that ever shown up as like being like uh, a root cause of it being like that person being angry have has that like you are you know in fitness and a fitness trainer so you know you can just you know share your insights as well in the comments yeah I know I miss you but I see you but we should meet up soon um and another um, last sign or red flag of anger that I want to touch on is um, being late. Now, <laughs> actually anyone who knows me knows that I am late for a lot of things, but it's not so much about poor time management. It's more about like you or this person is late to events intentionally because um, I'm not sure that can be accurate though. Yeah. Um, so being late, so you or someone else is late because they want to show up and be like, ta-da, I'm here, and they wanna take um, attention away from like the host of the party or they're looking to get limelight. I'm working on it all, but I'm not angry. No, I didn't mean that you were <laughs> angry, I'm sorry. I meant that when, when like you work and you coach with people, um, that that was that was what I, I meant. If like that had like if you had found like people who who you'd worked with. Oh yeah, no, not like that. 
Um, yeah, I know I'm late too a lot. Uh, it's it's not because I'm trying to steal the limelight, um, but you, you have a lot going on. You're trying to like get three kids together as well. Um, so I am sure <laughs> that is a challenge. Um, but yes, so being late in the sense of trying to steal the limelight from someone, um, wanting to, you know, be the life of the party. And so it's kind of like more of like a vindictive type thing. Um, so the solutions, I'm going to give three solutions, actually four. <laughs> the first thing is when you're angry, like I mentioned earlier, it's absolutely okay to be angry. Anger is a human emotion. There's nothing wrong with our emotions. It's what we do with our emotions that can become um, hurtful to us or to someone else. So stuffing, shoving, pretending the anger doesn't exist, um, even apologizing for the anger. Now, if you're or someone else does something that's hurtful in the moment of anger, then yes, of course, you want to apologize for hurting someone or um, upsetting someone. So I'm not talking about that, but like, would you, if someone, and sometimes people like really do something that, you know, deserves being angry, right? So, um, you know, if someone like hits you, of course you're going to be angry, right? Um, but then if that anger is unresolved and forgiveness, for example, isn't given, right? Then that anger can become part of you and we don't want to do that. So um, just acknowledging the anger um, instead of stuffing and shoving it and trying to shove it aside um, is okay, all right? So you, sometimes you just kind of have to sit and process through the emotion. And one way to do that is like just paying attention to your thoughts, being self-aware. So like, where is this thought going to take me? Is this thought going to take me somewhere I don't want to go? So should I keep like meditating on the fact, like, you know, a month later that so-and-so hit me, should I still be like thinking about that? Like a month later, is that gonna take me where I want to go in life? Or is it going to um, not take me where I want to go or need to be. So just kind of being, thinking about like our emotions and like what we're feeling, where are those going to take us? Where we want to go and need to go or somewhere that we do not want or need to be. The second thing you can do is ask yourself where or when did this thought begin? So say for example, you're angry at, at a parent, right? And this happens a lot, right? As, as children, a lot of times children get angry. We've been angry at our parents, right? And sometimes we don't understand why they do what they do. And so um, now you're making jokes about your partner like years later, um, maybe because you have unresolved issues with your mother from like years ago. But just asking yourself, um, when did this thought begin? To try to kind of like start connecting like, Am I really angry with this person? Am I taking things out on this person that has nothing to do with this person? But, um, you know, I was really rooted when I was like five and my mom like walked out and abandoned me. Um, where, is, where is the root? So like thinking about where like a lot of our angry thoughts began, um, that, is, that is a solution. And the third solution is if you're continuing to have like angry thoughts and stuff, ask yourself how you feel. Are you feeling guilty about these thoughts that you're having? Um, these thoughts that you're having, would you be embarrassed to tell this other person? Um, so if you are feeling guilty or if you're feeling embarrassed about sharing your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings with a person that you're actually angry at, you know, that is kind of a sign that, you know, there's unresolved anger that you have not yet released. Um, it's a sign that it's, you know, going, it's, it's going to be festering and, and probably not leading you in the place that you want to go. So actually giving voice and expressing yourself in a calm and um, logical way to someone, you know, um, in a respectful way to someone and expressing your thoughts, what's going on in your mind, what's, what's your emotional state. And, um, you know, that can help you free yourself from that, that guilt and help you to kind of like release and begin to move forward. Um, 
in life. And then sometimes, you know, it's just hard and you just can't do it on your own. So actually, this is a fit solution. I was only going to give three, but it's fit. Uh, it's Friday, so why not give more? Um, you may, if you're really struggling and you're finding that there's a lot of red flags in, in your, um, your life, um, and you know, you're having trouble solving and releasing the anger and you're still kind of like tempted and you're just like feeling guilty and you just can't get it out. You may want to seek out, you know, counseling. It could be a how, you know, there's so many different ways to get that. It could be with a therapist. It could be with a psychiatrist. It could be with a coach or a mentor, depending on, you know, what the level is and, and how, how out of control your your anger is in your life would depend really kind of like on which way you want to, you know, like go to um, helping yourself heal and getting that help you need to release your um, your anger and start to live at peace in, in your life, in, in yourself, as well as with others in the world. So, um, those were some of my red flags for anger and solutions. I hope they helped. If you have any questions, you're welcome to always send me a DM. I'll, um, get back to you and I'm happy to help you as best as you can. Bernadette, did you or have anything else you wanted to add or any thoughts? No, you're a social worker. All right. Okay. Well, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And I will be popping on a live at some point next week. So, all right. Take care. Be safe. Peace.